Nice easy start. Just get that little bit of movement and sometimes I I say that one of the thing one of the ways to think about this as you start up is if you if you've got a an old shed in your garden or something like that and you you go to open the door and you realize that the hinges have rusted up. You, what, what you don't do, you don't just wrench it because you'll pull the hinges, you just shake it about a little bit and get a little bit of movement and then it gradually builds up. And I always like to start any session, but especially sort of like the first one of the day if I'm training in the morning in that way. And I think it's something, a kind of principle that we can apply to, to mind and body in the sense that obviously physically we want that space in the body, we want the movement and that's going to require on a purely physiological level the blood to circulate a bit more and so on. And at the same time we want to try and just allow our thoughts to settle. Somebody wants to use the image of a, a, of a jar of muddy water just placed on the table and left there and eventually the mud settles. And you can have an idea about what it feels like, you've done this enough so that you've got, a, you've got something to refer to, which is great, but it's still going to take a, a little bit of time to get there. So just enjoy that process. Rather than thinking, I must do this, I must get this, I must get this. It's like you're at the start of a process and just, just enjoy the various stages of it. And in some ways, I think it's a, a reflection of our, our sort of long term history in Tai Chi. We, we almost go back to sort of like that first class and, and we get through it a bit more quickly, obviously, but the, the sort of process is the same, the development is is the same and it just gradually comes into focus. We start to think about details, weight slightly forwards in our feet and hips dropping back, soft in our knees. That little bit of movement in the center of the body spreading up through our backs Trying to find that alignment in the body between shoulders and hips that allows our spine a, a little bit of sort of release, softening, movement, and the effect that has on your rib cage. Your body is settling into a nice steady rhythm. A very loose feeling in your arms. Your arms and hands hanging down, feeling quite heavy. And your head just placed on top of the shoulders, sitting on top of your shoulders. Your chin is pulled back slightly. Not down, you're not looking down, but that pulling back will angle your eyes slightly down, as though you're standing by, standing by the sea, looking out towards the horizon. And just noting these details will help that process of your thoughts settling. And once you get that clarity, that clearer quality, then think of an image like moving through water. I've heard different versions of that, had worked with one guy, he used to say, you know, he was American, so he used the term molasses, but I suppose we would think of treacle. Um, 
or you know, just, just something to provide a little bit of resistance. And so the next sort of stage is this awareness of a quality of movement that's a little bit stronger, a little bit more connected. It requires a, a little bit more intent. It's now not enough that your arms just flop around, because if you're in water, they'd be going all over the place. So you have to find a way of, in a way, sort of steering them without letting them take over and without being too, too abrupt about it. And again, this is where imagery and memory also can, can become very important. So this curious group of sort of functions that we classify together as mind, our feelings, our sensations, how we're feeling, memory, memory of sort of the movements from before, uh, imagery, are really all part and parcel of this process of intent. Just gently nudging our, our body into a different way of moving. And it's, it's an interesting process because you can't actually go very far with it with a sort of logical thinking up but the posture itself i remember somebody saying saying once and people remember a television program called the golden shop where you'd have to guide somebody and it would you know to to with who's who had some kind of rifle and it would always be up a bit stop down a bit stop up a bit stop down a bit and left and right and so on and so forth and it feels like that if you get to right i've got to go forwards a little bit you're almost certainly go too far but an awareness that you want to go forwards combined with an awareness of the feeling you get when you come towards the the right position will guide your body into that and then just raise your arms Practicing will reinforce those qualities. Again, something I sometimes say to people is, is, is threading needles. If I, if I want to sew something, it can take me 20 minutes to thread the needle, especially if I can't find one of those special net, needle threaders. Um, and I've seen people who, who sew, sew regularly, uh, they're, they're taking the needle off me, taking the cotton off me and going, there you go. How do they do that? And if you, if you were going to try and guide somebody to, to thread and say, now move the cotton up, move it down, move it left, move it right, it would be, it would be too much. So as, as we become familiar with all, all of these qualities, providing we reinforce those qualities, then well, we, we will find they're more accessible. So the practice that builds up, Obviously, again, there's a physical element, and there are sort of larger things you know, to do with remembering movements and so on and so forth. But you also just very subtly training your awareness in, into this different way of moving. So, what do we practice? My advice is always in, in the first instance keep it simple and don't overdo it. So, I really like this first exercise that we often do. We'll do it again, just rocking your weight forwards and backwards. And as we go through the, the, the set of movements, and of course we will start in the same way, you'll find that some movements are probably more familiar to you, more comfortable with for, for, for you. And those are the ones I would say to start with. 
don't think, oh, it's going to be this one next or this one next. It's not exactly a random sequence, but it, it, it shouldn't be set in stone. And the important thing really is, is, is to do something. So we start with this to give us a chance to continue this process of settling in. And at the same time, just train our attention on those three kind of elements that I've talked about before. One is you know, where is too far before that happens. The second thing is where is the middle, where is the balance point. And the third thing is reminding ourselves of this quality of movement that we start to feel building up when we stay within those boundaries. So let yourself just come to rest. Take note of where you feel the weight is focused in the soles of your feet. Let your hips drop back. Get the feeling of the pelvis hanging. Remember, we want to get away from the idea that simply standing up, being upright, is a struggle. See if you can feel your, your breathing just settling a little bit. The whole of the front of your body should hang from the back slightly. And then hips dropping back, hands coming around in front of you and pushing up. And sinking down. We're going to do four of each exercise to begin with. Unless I lose count. Just take your time. And then wild goose. and out in the clouds. A dragon plucks the stars from the sky. When I say we do four, with this one and other similar ones, we would do a sort of four sets of them. So a complete set would be one on each side.
and then pushing in four directions. Last time with this set. And then changing. The ball without turning. And then if it's comfortable, we move forward with the turn. Switch sides. So without the turn, begin with.
then again, if it's comfortable for you with the turn, so always be very careful with this turn, surprisingly strong. Remember, we don't want to create a, a tension, a tightening in the body. And then we're in a boat in the middle of the lake. And then that last one, and sit back. Shake it up. Good. So there's several reasons why we find in in Tai Chi and Qigong that particular sets of exercises. A, they're often lumped together in sets. You get 10 of these or 12 of these or whatever. And the instruction is often you do four of this or something like that. There's nothing particularly uh, magical about the number four, I think. It's just a kind of convenient number. If you have an even number, it means you could do one side and then the other. Both sides are equal. Um, and it's a, way to, it's a way to help you focus your attention. If you're doing four, it's like, okay, this is what I'm doing. If you're like me, you'll probably lose count. It's not the end of the world if you do, but at least you're, you've are you got that, that, that focus. Another thing about it, of course, is timing. It can be quite difficult. You know, if, if, you, if you've got plenty of time, in some ways that's a lot harder to, to practice. Like, shall I do this or shall I do that? And you can muck around and it, it, you don't get anywhere. But... If you know that you're going to do four of each of these exercises, for instance, you have an idea of how long it will last. It would be great if we all had the time and, and, and the leisure to spend as much time as, as, as we like on Tai Chi, hours and hours and hours. It would be great. But we have lives, so it's not always possible. So, for instance, we started the slow exercises just before quarter two. It's now five two. So to do a complete set of those exercises with about four of each exercise at a reasonable pace. It takes about 10 minutes. Add to that maybe five minutes faster movements to, 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 to warm up. That's a quarter of an hour. So if you know how long it's going to take, sometimes it's much easier to find the space for that in, in your life. Um, and the Tai Chi forms are very much like, like, like that. So don't, you know, don't, don't think you, you, you have to do hours and hours and hours all the time. I think there's a place for that, but I also think constant repetition. In, in some ways, I think you'll get more value out of doing sort of that quarter of an hour or whatever it is each day than you will do going out and doing two hours one day and then nothing for a couple of weeks or something like that. Um, and gradually these things build up. And you may well find, you know, Maybe you can't remember all the exercises, but halfway through you think, oh, actually, he did this one as well, and something, something like that. So the, 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 the awareness of the set of movements gradually builds up. This set, by the way, is not a traditional set in, in the sense that um, some of the sets of movements go back a long way. Um, I've never yet found a set of movements that was totally satisfactory. I always find myself thinking, Oh, they didn't do that exercise. I really like that one, or and or I really like this one very much. It doesn't do much. I think this one's better, or something like that. So this is a this is a 
a set that I've gleaned from from different di 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 different groups of exercises. There's a lot of repetition and a lot of, sim of, of, of similarity. So that's a that's a that's a useful tool in building up a, a, a regular practice of, of of movement, a regular routine. You know it's going to take this amount of time, therefore you know you can put it in that part of your day or, or whatever. Now just transferring your weight from side to side. I'll come back to that thing about practicing a little bit later. But for now just focus your attention on that all important transfer of your weight just turning a little bit remember i'm exaggerating the movements i'm going to go into bear play though so it is a slightly bigger movement but just in passing, can you see what's happening here? I've gone a long way. This is really overextended. So even in bear play, where we do get that little bit more of a, a, a movement, we also want to be aware of that, the boundaries of that movement. And they're not rigid, but they're definitely there. There's a little bit of a push up. Feel the, the, the movement in your knees, your hips, your waist. And just be careful that when you turn, it's not, you're not twisting your, your knee in. So as I go across here, I'll come a bit closer to see this. So my head's disappearing, don't worry about that. And as I come across there, what I want is not my knee to do this, twisting in. I want it to go forwards there. And again, if I stand sideways on, there, I go across. So here, what I want to do, watch this knee, it goes forwards, and it, it's still pointing in the same direction as the toes. You might even find the knee goes a little bit further forwards with, with this exercise, but be really careful with that. You really don't want to, to put pressure on the knee. And then from here, Going into the full bear play, your arms mirroring the movement in your hips. So the hips are going in this sort of like rolling circle on each side. The shoulders are following that, your elbows are following the shoulders, your arms, your hands rather, are following your arms. Bear play. Try and just use that image of the bear. That's a good one for you. That doesn't work, a little less exotic, but just imagine your hands on the uh, pedals of a bicycle turning them. Of course, the, the bear has, this, has other qualities that you can begin to visualize as well. and smooth. Use that focused awareness to just be able to maintain a kind of check on areas that feel a bit stiff or a bit tight. If that's a habitual thing for you, you know, if it's always that shoulder that seems a bit tight, see if you can notice which exercises are the ones that really seem to help there or which ideas, which image. Does this image of water flowing over a rock that I used before help? Or breathing into that area, breathing out tension is another idea that we sometimes use. It's always 
finding the approach that is useful to you. And this time we're going to change to hitting the ball in front of the shoulder. So come down on one side, turn, draw your hand out, to load a little bit into this leg, turn the hand palm up and push back. Hitting the ball in front of the shoulder. Remember, it's not so much your arm coming across your body as it is your body turning. The arm does move across a little bit, but roughly from a point here where it's in front of your shoulder to really the, the midline of your body, no further than that. One more time on each side. Cow gazes at me. One more time, and as you finish this one, just be aware that your feet will now be turned out quite a while away. So you need to make just make that adjustment, holding the ball and circling that. And then back the other way. And yeah. one for points. Transferring your weight. First few, it's very much your feet and your legs, but then 
Again, you can apply that image of moving through water and start to use that to help you become aware of what's happening above your hips. We talk about upper and lower body, well, I do. Um, but actually, there's no such thing, is there? It's not like there's a line there somehow that is, divides, you, divides your body. So what happens below your hips affects above your hips and vice versa. You can. And then your different boards. Shake. First foot again, and pigeon spreads its wings. Change to fisherman cast the net. and pushing a wave.
Fishing is fancy springs. Fishing is fancy springs. One more. And then fisherman cast the net. and pushing away. One more time. And give you an exercise. Um, I'm going to do an exercise that I think for most of you is going to be new. It's based on a, a, a Shaolin exercise actually called Stirring the Beans. You'll, you'll, you'll see why. It's very simple, but always should always be aware in Tai Chi. Simple and easy are simply not the same thing. And that's really important that you know, this is based on a circle and circle is a very simple shape um, and go off and try it. Get a, not yet, but when we finish, get a bit of paper, get a pencil and try and draw a circle and see how close you can get to a good even circle. It's very, very difficult. So it's often the simpler things that that are the the, the hard and the circle is the basic unit of movement in Tai Chi. So this one, I would suggest you mirror my my movement. So I'm going to have my left foot forwards, which means you you you'll probably have have your right foot forwards. The basic movement is going to be the transfer of the weight and the turning in the centre of your body. You can see how I'm doing this. I'm going to start with this hand, the back hand, effectively. Hold it at about the, the, the height of your hips, palm down. And as you go forwards, use that movement to swing the arm around in a circle, going out and coming back. Don't overextend your arm. From the side, you see, I'm still slightly bent in the elbow. So your arm lengthens out a little bit, but don't start doing this. Because you'll get even more confused. So this is the first hand. And see the hip goes back, my shoulder goes back, my elbow goes back, my hand goes back, weight moves forward, the hip goes forward, shoulder, elbow, hand. Try with the front hand. And it's the opposite way around. You go back and you turn the hip, shoulder, your elbow, your hand, and then you start to go forwards, hip, shoulder, elbow, hand. This is the other circle. You've got the image of stirring the beans, a big cauldron, really, of beans. Or just imagine that you're rolling a ball around, big ball, 
or that your hands just resting on water and you're describing the circle on water there's various ways you could imagine it now this time bring bring your other hand your back hand up and as you go into the movement let both hands trace the appropriate circle and this is where we really want to bring our attention back to the center of our body One more time on the side. Change over. So we'll build it up in the same way on the opposite side. So the rear hand, so my left foot behind, I use my left hand. And again, think about that connection from your hip to your shoulder, from your shoulder to your elbow, elbow to your wrist, wrist to your feet. So as the weight goes forwards and your hip and your shoulder goes forwards, it's inevitable that your hand goes forwards. And it's a minimum, minimal effort with the arm and the hand. The main movement with your arm and your hand is, is to extend out and come back. Don't do this, carry on with what you're doing, but if I just stand here and do nothing with my legs or anything and do this, this is the movement I would have. The arm extends, contracts, extends, contracts. If I move the weight and hips as well, my arm extends, contracts, extends and contracts. And it's the weight movement in the center of my body that does the rest. And then with your front hand, And what you'll find is <clears throat> you start off with a minimal amount of movement, as I said, in, in your arms. As you feel those connections, you should, without disrupting that inner feeling of the movement, find that you can go a little bit further. Similar to the process I was talking about at the start of the class, of building the movements up gradually. And then back and both hands together so it's a bit confusing and that should be an encouragement to really bring your attention properly into your feet the movement of your weight and the turn in your center this is one of the key processes in Tai Chi for both mind and body is coming back to that root of quietness, that stillness. Okay, and then bring your feet parallel. I'm going to go back to couple of exercises, or three exercises we did at the start of the class. So rooting down and then wild goose and parting the pads. It's partly to remind you of some of the earlier exercises, you know, going back to this idea of practicing and you might be thinking, well, it's all very well, but I can't remember any of them now. This can help to remind you. 
as I said, it doesn't have to be these particular exercises in this sequence, but this may help. And if you are looking to build up a practice, be reasonable with yourself. Don't, don't overdo things. If you set out to do an hour and do 55 minutes, you'll be annoyed because you haven't fulfilled your goal. If you set out to do five minutes, you do 10 minutes, you'll feel great about it. So you know, build it up slowly, let it fit into your life rather than imposing on it. Because it's not going to work if you try and sort of hammer it in, into your life. It's, you're not going to be able to sustain it. There's one more round of this. Rubbing your hands together and tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down your arm. The side. your back. And your hips. Keep going and just need to retrieve my glasses. Legs. Part of your belly. Some years ago, in fact, the first time I ever taught workshops, I was reluctant to do it, but was talked into it. I did a series of three workshops at Potsdam Village College. And of course, traditionally, to learn Tai Chi or something like that, you know, you go down to the park at six o'clock every day and you practice with the teacher for an hour. And about 10 years later or 20 years later, you start to do you're getting somewhere. This is the kind of the myth, if you like, of, 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 of Tai Chi. So the idea of doing a day was. What's the point in that? Um, well, I took this on, and um, one of the women who came to the first one, she came back for the second one, and she, she, she told me something that had happened. She had some kind of executive job that involved her. I, I, I don't know what it was, but she said she was due to go to a conference to give a presentation. She got stuck in traffic, um, so she was late. And of course, you know, we've all been there, haven't we? We've all been. Been, been in that kind of situation. So if you finally got to the conference venue, kind of found a parking space, leapt out the car, ran into the hall, quite flustered. And as she got to the door of the conference room, she suddenly remembered the Tai Chi day that she'd done and how she felt. And she thought, what's the, what's the point of this? She said, and, and this is what she told me. She said, I sat down and just did some slow breathing for a couple of minutes. She said, I was still late, but I felt much better about it. And she said, I strolled into the conference room, went up to the rostrum and said, hi there, <laughs> sorry I'm late, I got stuck in traffic, shall we start? And she, and it was fine, because everybody knows, I mean this is before mobile phones and things like that, so everybody knows what it's like to get stuck in traffic, you can't do anything about it. And it, it struck me that somehow she would gone straight to the heart of what this practice is about. When we were doing this, I talked about coming back to your centre. and. That, for me, that's a really crucial process. So when we start to practice, we always have these ideas, I can do this, I can do this, you want to achieve this. But don't forget that very simple idea. This uh, Practicing is a way of creating that space for yourself, away from everything else that's going on. It's not exclusive or anything like that, but it's just that, that 
that that drawing in. So think of it like that. It's just, you know, your practice time is a little bit of time for you to experience that space, that quietness, however you 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 think about it, just to remind yourself that it's possible to do that. And that's one of the reasons why I like to practice in the morning, just to start the day off with, oh yeah, I remember what this feels like. You know, but if you can't do it in the morning, any time will 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 do. So keep it simple at, at the start. Don't be over ambitious. You want to progress. I want you to 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 to, to progress and just remember the basics and see how the practice builds up for you. That was how I did it. So um, it's a good way to build up the practice. So embrace tiger, return to mountain. So sinking down, pushing up, bring your arms around and you're holding the ball against your chest, draw in and sink. And stand. Shake As always, thank you very much, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, give us a shout. Yeah, unmute yourself. Don't. 